Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the workshop. The idea here will be present you or show you a little bit more about DXP Cloud, how we make things more easier to do in a uh, software development cycle, right? So you guys are seeing in the tables some numbers. These numbers are accounts that we create on DXP Cloud, you know? So uh, if you can pair with someone else, good. I think uh, we have some uh, free spots. So if you don't want to uh, pair with someone, you can uh, grab another number and uh, and follow up the, the the workshop. Okay. So okay, my name is Thiago. I've been in library for eleven years already. Uh, I was a GS. I was working in consulting side, so I saw a lot of life free projects and how they were successful and how they were not successful. And when I moved to life free cloud, uh, we decided, okay, let's get the best practice. Let's get all the experience that we have on GS, uh, when, uh, the experience that we have developing the product and bring to the platform. Let's make easier the life of our customers that don't want to take care of infrastructure, uh, of, uh, software, of hardware, of network. Let's bring all this best practice to the platform and make some, uh, make a cloud solution for them, right? So this hand, uh, this workshop, I divided uh, in two major uh, uh, tasks. One of them is uh, hands-on. So we're gonna make some exercise. We're gonna uh, work with the platform, we're going to back up, we're going to restart, we're going to deploy, right? And in between this, uh, this process, once uh, like uh, we are restoring something, I will go deep on the technical aspects of the platform, right? To understand better uh, how uh, it's composed the, the platform, right? So we have two hours to be here. I hope we, ha we spend only one hour. Uh, my experience in previous events, it's around that, one hour, one hour and ten. So you guys are free to ask and yeah, that's it. Hands-on tech aspects, right? You have a question? No, no, I'm very interested in this. <laughs> okay, just let me put my recharge. Otherwise, okay. Okay. So... We're gonna start with the hands-on. So let's put our hands on the DXP cloud, right? So you guys have the number on the table, right? To access DXP cloud, this is the URL. This is the user. So change, replace the number that you have with this and the password is test, right? So everything is set up already for you. I believe you guys, once you Log in. Yeah, let's wait, I believe. Uh, let's wait until everybody has the, the URL. Maybe for next event, I will create a short URL. It'll be better. Everybody's there? Can I move on? No, not yet? Okay. Yeah, here. Uh, to login, workshop, so replace the digit here. Yeah, for those of you that is pairing, like uh, just uh, just one person needs to log in, right? The second one just like a pair programming or pair workshopping, right? Like we have more spots if 
like everybody wants to go like uh, individually, we have more spots. No, no access, nobody, really. Okay. No access. Okay. Uh, workshop, for instance, number two at lifefree.com. The URL is wrong? I'm sorry? Oh, no, that's strange. It's working for me. No, just life free. Like, are you guys on the life free network? Someone got it. Like, was able to log in. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, because for me it's, it's working. Maybe there's uh, there. This is rooted to a blood balancer and some of the backends are attached, maybe. Because maybe in twenty twenty five that's pretty good. This is strange. Yeah. I'm still able to log in. Um, so the the URL is not loading or like it, no. not loading loading at all. Okay, it's loading. Okay, it's back. Someone, someone in the team makes some magic. <laughs> so we are there. So workshop. So mine is the first, I will be the number one, and you guys can, so I believe everybody needs to be there, okay? Yeah, it's default password. Like this is just for the workshop, once we finish, I will shut down the machines and everything, because it, it's, it costs money. <laughs> Okay, uh, can I move on? I believe so, right, great. So this is the first page, I would say, uh, is this our dashboard. When you get in into DXP, uh, on DXP Cloud, you have the list of projects. So here we have just one project that's workshop one for me, and but I can have, I don't know, my intranet, my extranet, like several projects you can manage in the same page. And each of the projects will have different environments. That's what we are seeing here, right? Uh, like Eduardo explained uh, a few minutes before, um, there is like environments, you can create environments, and this is where you uh, set up everything, right? So, okay, I have projects, so let's go to one of the environments. I will go to the production environment and here is, I would say that is the most important page of the of the XP Cloud because it has the overview of one of the environments, right? On this page, I can see my services. What is a service? It's a piece of my stack. I have my search engine, my load balancer, my life free, my database, my backup engine, and so on. So as soon as we move on with the platform, probably more services will be available for you guys, right? Uh, I have the services, I have what's the, the deployment, the latest deployment, we have the activities, we have the alerts. Some of these concepts was already presented for you, uh, to you guys before. I believe everybody was here on the keynote, right? Yeah, okay, great. So overview, then I can go more in deep on my services, on the activities that shows the uh, 
the builds, uh, when it started, when it succeeded, when uh, I got a new user on the, on the environment, like uh, when I invite someone to participate in, one, in, in a project. Uh, I have logs. Logs here, it's a really nice feature that we aggregate all the logs of all the services. So I have the logs from my load balancer, I have the logs from my uh, search engine, I have the logs of Lifery. Um, monitoring, again, the same thing that Eduardo presented. We have backups. Uh, here the, is the list of backups that I have on my production environment. Right now we have backups for production. You know, for the other environments, we just restore, we don't backup. Uh, we have teams that I can invite more people to, uh, to participate in the project. And we have general settings, right? So this is a quick overview of the tool, right? And uh, why we are here? Uh, here, I mean in the backups. Because, let me go back a little bit here. Because in our hands-on, I would like to present some tasks that usually it's, uh, it's pain points in a software development lifecycle, right? The first one is uh, being able to, with the latest data, the data that you have on production, uh, create an environment with the latest code, right? What your development team is developing, right? Usually this in a, norm, a normal project takes, I don't know, hours, maybe days. I, I saw some projects that took like weeks to get a production uh, backup restore in a UAT or on a dev environment and uh, make, it, make it available for the development team to integrate the new, um, the new code, right? And why this is important? Because sometimes you are, like your project, it's, I don't know, one year uh, on production and you are going in a, a, a second phase of the product, of the project that you have to change some data that is on uh, on production, you know? So you have to have the latest data and the latest code all together in the same environment to make sure that once you deploy to production, you will be safe, you know? And this is not a, a simple task. It demands uh, a lot of pieces from different uh, departments. And with DXP Cloud, you can do everything uh, on, on just one, one system. It's very uh, straightforward. Uh, so we're gonna do this and later on I will create a plugin. I will commit something and this will be available for us to deploy. So let me go back to the, uh, to the console. So I don't have any backups here. What are uh, we gonna change, uh, we're gonna do? Let's go to services and I will open Lifery and I will uh, pretend, I would say, that I create some uh, new content and production environment and I will backup this production environment. Why? Because later on in the end of the workshop, we're going to restore it on the dev environment with the plugin that we created. So, guys, you can go to services, you can go to to our load balancer and open Lifery, okay? So this is our regular Lifery, it's 7.1. And the idea here is I will um, remove the portlets, create a content, change the page, basically. That's the idea, change the page to uh, be able to, to backup and then restore it. Uh, to get access to this URL or where life is running, you guys go to services, then services, the load balancer. And here, this is the URL that you can click on it and you're gonna have access to life free. Okay. So to log in is the default password, test, test, okay. If you guys are 
live free customers already. It's test test. Sorry. Did you find the, the are you able to get to the page? To the library? No? Okay. It's here. So you go to services. Okay. Then load balancer. And it is slow. It's okay, it's life. <laughs> All right. Uh why it's slow? Because it's the first time that we are accessing, okay? And it's not the solution that uh, Brian Chen presented, yes. We don't have this magic uh, bundle yet. But as soon as we have available as DXP, as Enterprise Edition, we're gonna uh, be, we're gonna uh, use it on the, on the cloud. So, okay. I didn't log in. So, okay, I'm there. I log in. Uh, this is up to you guys. What you guys want to do, just make sure that you change the page. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this portlet. Okay, the page is changed. And I will add a new web content to the page. Okay. You can add any, any portlet, anything. Like just make sure that you change the page. Okay. I'm going to add this commerce HTML. Okay. I open here a life rate. Uh, page with some content so just control C control V copy and paste and yeah so I change the page I remove the hello world partlet and I put some random content right so if you guys you can do the same thing or you can put a wiki a blog or anything else just make sure that you change the page right so okay this I am simulating um, a production environment right so I have my content I have my content team I have my business team they are working they are building uh, new content uh, it's on production my users are, are accessing right that's good okay but right now my team my development team needs to have access to these portlets, or, or actually to this data, to make sure that the portlets that they are using, the portlets that they are developing, don't break the content, all right? Or the team. Most of the time, this happens with teams, right? When you are developing a new team, and um, uh, some CSS breaks the content that's on production. So this process, will help you to get this problem as fast as, as possible. Okay, so, okay, we changed the, the page. Right now, I'm going to backups, and I'm going to fire up a new backup. A new, I, I will fire a, a, a backup. Okay. So, go back to the console. Go to backups here. And here you have a list of backups, or no list at all, because it's a new project for you and for me too. So just click on uh, manual backup, and the platform will start a backup for you. Okay. And uh, what is this backup? What is Composer? Right. We are backing up the database of Liferay, and we are backing up the document library. That you most important things uh, of our library project, right? So this takes some time. Uh, in between, I will switch to the text packs to more. Is not working? Not working? What? Hey, Johnny, can you help? I'm sorry, you can't. Okay. 
the same one? It's a connection problem. Can you, like, for those that has, I don't know, uh, cell phones, Amsterdam cell phones or Holland cell phones, can you, like, do a 3G? Like, just make sure that is not the, uh, is not the Wi-Fi, or is the Wi-Fi, actually? Uh, like, we are facing some connection problems. For me, it's working well, but uh, who knows? Anybody else? Is, yeah, it looks like two here. I have a different problem. A different problem? Question mm -hmm. regarding this snapshot uh, backup, uh, how is it done? So should it be yeah, yeah. Uh, in production that it should be some uh, like read-only mode uh, switched on on the portal, or can you can you do it anytime and it just ensures that the data, the database state and the file system uh, for the commit library is exactly the same? How is it done? Yeah, we, you can do uh, anytime. Like it's a manual, you just trigger. Right, but uh, you can also schedule uh, backups like every hour, every three hours, every day. So, no, I mean, uh, for example, if I imagine the situation that the, there are editors uh, in the in the time just uh, creating, you know, uh, including your documents to the document library. Okay. So if I will do this uh, uh, this backup, uh, is it ensure that uh, it takes the snapshot from from just one point in time? So usually, if I would do it, maybe I would, uh, you know, ensure that no one is, you know, editing the portal data or yeah. do some read-only mode uh, on switch on or something like that. Yeah, as best practice, usually we uh, start a backup uh, during uh, midnight, yeah, something okay. like that. So we need you know, to yeah, this is to avoid possible problems. Uh, we start both backups in parallel. I mean, like the database backup and the document library. Uh, backup, so we start in, in parallel. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a best practice, it's better to do it at okay. midnight. And, okay. So, okay, going back to backups. Yeah, it looks like. So my backup was finished. I think I'm, I'm, I'm facing some network issues too. Uh, but uh, okay, let's let's move on. This is the first part of the backup restart. Right now, I will. Okay, this uh, context of my business, my marketing team. Right now, I would like to show you a context about the development team. So I am building a new portal, a new team, something like a new committing something, and how this works on the on the platform. So me. Okay. So here. 
you guys don't need to do that, right? I already uh, create a portal for you. It's already available in the list of fields, right? So here I have, once you create an account on DXP Cloud, we create a Git repository for you, and this Git repository you use it to, um, it's used to uh, create new uh, portlets, teams, and so on. It's a plugins SDK. If you guys work with the, uh, uh, actually, it's a workspace EE. So if you guys are like uh, life free customers, pretty sure you guys already uh, uh, heard about uh, workspace EE and how it works. And that kind of thing. Uh, so here on modules, I have a list of portlets. Right now, I have just one, but I'm gonna add a second one that is available. This is what I'm doing here. I'm just copying like a portlet that's already uh, working to my uh, workspace EE, and I will commit it and push to GitHub. That's it. And this will be available on the platform, on the XP Cloud platform. So I am simulating a process of continuous integration with Jenkins and everything, right? So projects, we deploy. I copy right now on modules. I have two portlets, TS and OSJ portlet. I will add everything. Okay. So right now I'm gonna commit. So I commit all the changes and I'm gonna push these changes to GitHub. Uh, this network does not allow me to push through SSH, so I need to change something here. Yes. That's the idea. So this is a hack. Again, guys, you don't need to do that. I'll just show you. Okay, it failed because I have second factory authentication set. So Johnny, don't look at this what I'm doing now because we can do that. Let me oops. Security authentication. Oh I cannot disable my two-factor authentication journey. Hmm. Okay. We have a problem here. Okay, let me turn on my 3G because this network does not allow me to push. Thank you. 
Okay, so I commit the changes. So, you guys. So uh, here I have four commits, right? Uh, the last one I just made it three minutes ago. And if I go to my to my GitHub account, here I have three commits, but locally I have four. So I'm gonna push this. And okay, just push it. If I refresh, mm -hmm. I have four commits right now, and and let me open the Jenkins. So right now I'm gonna show you guys um, our Jenkins. So you guys don't need to access it too. It's just the uh, idea just to show you how, how it's being built. Okay, it's the first time that I, I am accessing Jenkins as well, so uh, let's take a little bit of time. So, how is this working? So, if you create a service from the environment, uh, mm -hmm. automatically in the library cloud, the repository is created with, yes. the, with the workspace yeah. structure. Yes. And you can somehow uh, access uh, the URL of the repository so you can clone it locally, right? Yes. Let's see. Yeah. Once you like, okay, I want to use GXP Cloud, we create an account for you on the, the console and we're gonna give you a git repository, okay? Here's where are your code is, and use it, the workspace EE, to create your portlets, your teams, your customization, and so on. Okay. So here I have Jenkins. Uh, we use this open, um, this Blue Ocean plugin to make things more uh, beautiful. And like Eduardo show you guys, uh, we have a pipeline that you can customize. That you can customize, right? But uh, there is one missing part here. Like this is the first build. It should have a, another build. Let me check if what is not it. connected. It's something failing here. So it was working yesterday. Okay. Well, the the idea here was once I commit, the Jenkins will be um, uh, we're gonna send a message to the Jenkins. And Jenkins will build this commit, and this commit will be once built it, and once it was uh, successful, successful finish, it will be available on okay, here on the builds page, right? So this is what happened when I set up the environment for you guys. So Jenkins built the 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 code, 
and it creates some builds for us. So here we have uh, the most important build is this last three months. Uh, I have this build was made from the master branch, and the commit is this one. Uh, this is the message of the commit, and it was built for the production eight, eight hours ago, and by the user workshop, right? So here, what we have. Jenkins built our Java, our CSS, our, I don't know, XML, uh, everything that you usually do in a library project, it built it, and get these results, the jar files and everything, and send to DXP Cloud saying, hey, create image, Docker image with this content, right? And this is what DXP um, uh, Cloud uh, made. So it creates a build number two, a build number three, a build number four with these changes. Okay? So that way you can uh, you can pick one of these and deploy to in some environment. So the idea here is build once and deploy everywhere. Kind of. You know, like I can deploy on production, deploy on on uh, on dev and UAT and so on. Okay. Um, so let me let me go back to. Ah, okay. I uh, just remember. Right now, uh, getting back to the context of the development team, I will deploy to development the new code that I just created. You know. So you guys. Uh, have uh, set up. I believe everybody has this this number of uh, 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 builds. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, looks like it's you pick it up here, <laughs> right? So if you guys look, uh, you can guys see on Jenkins that is building. So the process of building. Once it's finished, it will show up here. Okay, build number five, probably. Okay, but uh, for you guys, don't need to like, uh, deal with uh, Git and all the issues that I have here. I just uh, create this third build here. So probably everybody has this add, uh, add some portlet, the number three. And what we're gonna do with this build is we're gonna deploy it to the dev environment, right? So how, how we do this? Uh, okay. There is this, in the end of the, the line, these three dots, you click on it and you can deploy, build, two. And here we have a screen that will show you, okay, what is the selected build? So you can confirm the, that's the build number three, that's the master, that is this commit. So if you want to look this commit, just click on it and it will open on GitHub what are the changes. Going back to the console. So all right, I have the build and right now I want to deploy to what environment? So I will be, we're going to deploy to dev environment. That's the first one. So just select it and ask to deploy to dev. And once you finish or once it uh, you click it, it will be redirect to this deployment page that is uh, right uh, it's all together with build and deployment. So if you refresh here, you're gonna see, okay. So here's important, uh, it's an important page because it shows all the environments that you have and all the builds that is on each environment. So latest, this session here, latest, it shows the dev environment, the if environment, this is something that you guys don't need to uh, pay to the application, but the dev environment, production environment, UAT environment. So here I have three different contexts. I have the dev environment is being deployed, 
So I am on the deployment page. So I am deploying all the services on the dev environment. Uh, UAT, I don't have anything. So the environment UAT is empty. Okay. And production environment, it's green. It's already deployed. It's, it was the it was the um, the environment that we access life rate, that we pick up life rate, and so on. So we have we have right now three different environments with three different contexts, and you can see everything from just one page. You know? Okay. Regarding the deployments and builds, so uh, can you somehow um, like uh, make a group of, group of users that can see only I don't know infrastructure environment or production. Deploy mm -hmm. only certain environments, so sure. you can easily mm -hmm. do this, right? Yeah. Okay. This is already in place, uh, but uh, here everybody is admin of yeah. for this user for this uh, uh, <coughs> workshop. But um, just let me go very quickly to okay here on team. Mm -hmm. You can invite anybody and. You can say that it's admin, contributor, or guest. Each one has different uh, permissions to access. And this is only for the production environment. So for production environment works uh, with, uh, I don't know, two or three users. Uh, so these are fixed, if a, fixed roles, or you can create some of your own? It's fixed roles. Right now it's fixed okay. roles. Okay. Uh, on that environment, you can have a different set of users. For instance, 10 users, you know? So you control the permission based mm -hmm. on roles and, roles and environments. Okay. Okay. So let me get back to here. Okay. So dev is being deployed. It's creating the database. It's creating the life rate. It's creating the last search. It's creating the load balancer. Everything. Right. So in between. Of this, let's run on the background. I will switch to the presentation. I have Just some other questions. Sure. I don't know if I should ask after or later or directly, no. because it's, it's connected with the build. So uh, each time you, you commit to any branch, uh, you basically uh, build, right? Yes. So can you some, uh, is there some retention policy uh, on uh, how long builds are there, or no. can I just no. so it's always everything yeah. is there? Yeah. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to have some discussion around the roadmap. And one of the points that uh, I would bring, I would like to bring is uh, uh, build and deployment management. And one of the things is like that, okay? Because I want to cancel some of our, not cancel, but lock some builds. Say, okay, this build cannot be deployed on any place, or this build can only deploy on the production. You know, because this kind of thing, this is not in, in, yeah. in place right now, but it's kind of a management of builds and mm -hmm. deployments. Because for example, if I develop, I have a lot of feature branches, right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, maybe during the life of feature branch, I need maybe the build, but after the branch is uh, merged back, you can. Uh, you don't, I don't need the build, for example. Yeah. And yeah. that would be a mess in this build, uh, you know, list because... Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. But it's on our roadmap, it's actually it's on my mind. Already, and uh, something that I would like to, to bring to the to the team. Okay, so yeah, what happened? Uh, going back, like the it was building on Jenkins, and right now it's available for me here. So the build number five, it's available for me here. You know, so if you uh, if you want to, if you don't want to work with Jenkins directly. This is some of the solution that you, you are looking for. Because you don't care what is, uh, how it's being built or uh, uh, what's doing during the build. You just care about the, uh, the artifact, the end artifact. And here you have the end artifact. It's available for you. So Jenkins is publishing for me here and I can choose to deploy it anywhere. You know, any given any environment. So, Everything is connected from the development, uh, from creating your portlets to the deployment. One, uh, one question. Uh, is it possible to deploy to another branch 
What about if uh, Rav Mini washes? Yes, pull requests. Yes, okay. that's the idea, <coughs> you know. And you can choose the one to in which you want to 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 the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For instance, you have uh, I don't know. You work with uh, feature branches or with pull requests. So here we're gonna show you. Uh, here in branch, we're gonna show. Okay, this is master, but uh, I'm working with the uh, dev. Uh, Dev branch or production branch. It will show you. Okay, this was built from Dev branch with the uh, I don't know the Shack commit number X. You know. So okay, this I know what it is because I just uh, built here and it's available for me for to deploy. Or it's a, just a pull request. You know, it's a pull request that show you. Okay, let me deploy this pull request on this Dev environment. And see how it works. But is it? Uh, is it uh, is it possible to uh, like do this merge uh, request um, like it what it does usually is that that do the merge for you like uh, temporarily and deploy it some somewhere right so yeah so right now yeah. it's not possible to deploy directly once you build something and deploy it but it's something that will be discussed next week okay so. you know because for instance uh, on dev environment everybody that yeah uh, every time that someone push a change to the master, I would like to deploy to that environment, you know. I know that this is something that uh, it's a best practice on uh, the development uh, life cycle and we would like to bring this to the platform as well, you know. Like uh, from moment zero you can start to use it without any configurations, you know, this is it's very important. So what we did right now, we uh, went to production environment and we create a backup. We went to dev and create a new portlet and deploy this new portlet, all right, this environment. So once it's deploying, I believe dev is not ready yet. Okay, dev is still deploying. This takes some time, so I would say like 10 to 15 minutes. Again, it's live free, right? But uh, imagine to create the environment with database, Elasticsearch, Lifery, load balancer in 15 minutes is pretty fast, right? Uh, okay, let me. Are there any means of configuring those services? For instance, the yeah, I will show you right now. Okay. So. Okay, I would like to talk until, uh, in, in the meantime that everything is being deployed, I would like to talk about uh, some technical aspects and, um, yeah, some technical aspects. And here it's how uh, it's composed the set of services of um, uh, DXP Cloud. Uh, each environment, you guys, what you guys are seeing here, it's one environment, how they are composed. And we have a proxy, uh, we have a live free DXP, we have a VPN, we have a search engine, we have a continuous integration server. This continuous integration server is not per environment, it's available for the whole project. So we have only one continuous integration server per project. Uh, the database, this is one per environment. And we have also the NFS or shared file system that you can store your uh, your document library. This is uh, useful for clustering. And we have our backup engine. You're so mentioning NFS, but uh, is that uh, the service that Cobytes is uh, giving? Yeah, Cobytes is the implementation. Ah, okay, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. I thought it was something arbitrary, uh, proprietary. Uh, no, no, no. Here is the rule of the service, and here is the implement implementation of the service, right? So, but I'm gonna go deeper on okay. each of these. Okay. So, proxy. Our proxy is implemented by any Jinx or X Engine, and uh, we have some configuration already in place that uh, deals, for instance, with proto headers, you know, so if you guys uh, already deal with uh, SSL and uh, SSL termination, proto headers is very important. Um, let me go back a little bit. Uh, here, uh, DXP Cloud only works with HTTPS 
so we don't do any mix and mold. This is not a best practice at all, so we drop it. And um, so everything until here is HTTPS. So we have a load balancer here of DXP Cloud that makes the, um, the SSL uh, offload. And here, proxy, life rate, they only speaks HTTP, <laughs> right? So throttle headers is important to make sure that LifeRay uh, creates the URL, the H, uh, HTML URLs with HTTPS, right? And this is a, a, a pain point when you have to, to set up Tomcat, when you have to set up any jeans, so everything is already in place for you. Uh, we also have stick session, this is for clustering, um, it's already in place. Compressing, so you have to, oh, I need to, uh, like, uh, yeah, compress the HT, uh, a, uh, HTML. Uh, right now, some users use it on LifeRay, but we uh, offload this from LifeRay and put this on NGINX. And we have also extension points, for instance, I need some URL rewriting, I need some URL redirecting, I need to serve some content, some static content. So all this can be done with, uh, with our NEGs. So it means that you can somehow, uh, there is some placeholder and you can put some your part of configuration of NGINX inside, right? Yes, like okay. exactly. You know, so it's a Docker image. There is some extension points like folders mm -hmm. that you drop some files there and oh, then, okay, okay. this uh, this is my HTML or this is my configuration for URL, URL redirecting mm -hmm. or rewriting. So we have, uh, I would say, like a framework for the anything that you can extend in some points. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So is it possible to, to change the possible? Change what? To use another person without any like uh, No. No. Okay, yeah, this is a really important question, right? Uh, so, can I use PostgreSQL? Can I use uh, JBoss? No. All this stack is uh, defined by GXP Cloud Team, and this was the stack that we defined it, that you guys saw before. And we are not looking forward to uh, support different database or different uh, uh, load balancers or application servers. You know why? Because we saw that this uh, uh, set of services or set of uh, implementations is the most used, that has the most performance, so that has has the most best practice. So this is uh, like ex our experience said that okay, let's go with this stack this set of services that we're gonna uh, uh, help, I don't know, 80% of the customers, you know. Because some customers uh, don't accept to use another, another load balancing. So if the customer said, okay, I don't accept, probably the XP Cloud is not for this type of customer, you know. So we, again, we, we are, again, Actually, like, we are not looking for embrace all the world, like all the customers, any kind of customers. We believe that there is some customer that will really will enjoy this. We will be very uh, happy using DXP Call. But there is some customer, I don't know, like banks that has, that has more restrictions about some of the things that uh, like, it's not, it's not a fit for them, you know? So, okay. Database, RDS, uh, we have multi-AZ, we have encrypted at rest, and we have automated backups, right? It is implemented with, with uh, MariaDB, it's not Oracle, it's not uh, uh, SQL Server, it's MariaDB. Uh, most of our engineers work, most I would say like 99% of our engineers work with MariaDB, it's the one that we know uh, most, and that's why it's basically the decision that we made. And if you think, like, I'm not sure if everybody here is tech uh, background, but if I am a business, uh, a business users, I really don't care if it's uh, JBoss, Tomcat, MariaDB, 
Oracle. The only thing that I care is my site is up and running. And I believe it's something that is uh, something, it is like we are switching from this idea of, oh no, I like Oracle, I want to use Oracle. No, I want something that works. I believe this is the most important part. Um, okay, database. Our uh, uh, our search engine is implemented by Elasticsearch. Okay. One question from the database: Is uh -huh. there a possibility to get access to the database directly about uh, a UI or um, shell comments, uh, so I can select statements or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, the answer right now is yes and no. Okay. <laughs> 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 the <Let's> finish. <laughs> Uh, we don't provide right now a solution out of the box. That's why it's no. But yes, you can and we will help you if you need to get like a, a PHP admin or adminer, something like that running on your environment. So yes, it's possible, you know. But next week, this is another topic that we'll be discussing. Actually, it's yeah, it's already uh, on our pipeline to, to develop. Okay. The last search. Uh, search engine is implemented by Elasticsearch. We have uh, XPAC uh, that has like some security improvements from Elasticsearch. That's paid as well. Uh, and we also have extension points. So if you need to configure something different that we have, first of all, we we will check if this change is supported, and if it's supported, you can change it. Uh, our NFS uh, is implemented by Cobite. Uh, since we are running on Amazon, for us it would be easier to just use NFS from Amazon, right? But we realize we did some tests, and the NFS of Amazon is really, really slow. And then we decide to uh, build a storage, or not not build, but we decide to uh, buy a storage, and this is the storage. Cobite is implement our implementation. It's much faster than Amazon NFS, and we have redundancy in three disks, so three ma different machines is the redundancy. So it's really hard to lose any that. And then we have the Life Rate XP, that's our Hawkstar. And here we have some extension points. Most of our work were, uh, was made on top of, uh, of Life Rate. Uh, if you guys, uh, these are the, ext the extension points. Uh, these extension points are folders, for instance. And these folders, we have like f five folders. The first one is deploy. It's the same um, rule that it has on Liferay. Like you put your jar files, your WAR files, it will be deployed. Uh, we have the config. Hold on. We have the config folder. And this is where you will drop your portal files, portal.properties files your OSGI config files. So everything that must be configured will be put on this folder. Uh, we have the license folder. Uh, this is not that important for you guys, but this is where we, we as platform, will deploy a file that will be the, your license. Uh, the license is controlled by the XP Cloud team, okay? Hot fixes. Uh, if you need, uh, or if Liferay uh, release a new, I don't know, security fix or a hot fix and you need to apply it, this is where you're going to deploy or actually like drop your, uh, your zip file, your patch file. And once the Docker image is startup, the Liferay Docker image is startup, it will look on this folder and see, okay, I have a hotfix to apply before Liferay startups. So the image will apply the hotfix, it will clean up all the uh, temporary files, and then startups Liferay, right? 
So you don't need to go to the patching tool and apply the patch or remove something. Everything is made, uh, uh, made for you on the background. And uh, at last we have the script folder is where you can put any kind of shell script to customize your image, to customize your setup. So for instance, you have, I don't know, you have to change the uh, a jar file on the, doc, on the Tomcat, you know. So this is something that is not uh, made easily with the previous folders, but with a shell script, you can do it. You can copy the jar file to the desired, uh, desired folder. Uh, another thing that we uh, we add as a feature is different types of portal uh, properties files. Uh, during the during the years of consulting, I saw that uh, customers usually put everything on portal ext properties, all kind of uh, properties. But some of the properties uh, it affects all the environment and other properties properties affects only one environment, like production environment, dev environment, and so on. So we decided to put, like, uh, or create property files that uh, that shows this difference, right? The first one is the all, so portal-all properties. Uh, this will be, uh, you're going to put all the properties that change in all environments, that's the same in all environments. The dash if it's for just one environment, for instance, you have on dev, you have a different, I don't know, uh, activity directory uh, server, service. So you put the address of your activity directory on the F environment, on the f.properties file. So production is different, so different credentials, different URL, and so on. Okay. Uh, Portal-CLU is for clustering. This is uh, exist, but it's something that you guys don't need to uh, look at or configure it. It's already um, available in the platform, and it has the properties for clustering. You know, so once you say, okay, this environment is clustering, and how you do that? Uh, it's just um, uh, environment variable, right? So, okay, my production environment is clustering. So I will create an environment variable, say, okay, life rate, you are clustering equals to true. And all the, plat the platform will, uh, will figure out that and will set up all the configuration files for you. You don't need to spend time, okay, how I'm gonna cluster in this environment? Let me, uh, I'm gonna use, uh, JDBC ping, I'm gonna use uh, um, JGroups ping, and so on. So I don't need to take care of that, you know. And finally, we have Portal XD properties. That's the one that you guys know, and it will overwrite all the other files. May, may, I, may I, uh, for example, uh, like switch between like sticky session or session application or these mm. kind of settings, or is not that some, yet? So we have sticky session mm. by default. Yeah. We only we only uh, support stick session, but again next week we're gonna discuss that okay. because I had some ideas the last two weeks and uh, yeah we need to discuss that. Okay and um, okay another uh, list of feature is we don't support AGP. Uh, the proto handlers also is already done. Uh, the environment the cluster is implemented using JDBC ping. You know, and for uh, uh, for turning this on, it's just a matter of uh, environment variable. We also have Dynatrace already uh, configured. You know, if you um, actually like all the production environments, we have Dynatrace already configured. So if you are a DXP Cloud customer, you're gonna have a Dynatrace account to see how it works or uh, to see how. Uh, your environment, how production is, is running, and so on. So it's just a matter of, again, environment variable that uh, we turn on. Uh, the JDBC driver is up to date. This is minor things, and uh, the patching tool as well is up to date. So you don't need to 
take care of these kind of things because the DXP Cloud team will take for you. Okay, VPN. Our implementation is OpenVPN. Uh, we only have uh, the possibility to configure it as a client. So DXP Cloud will be a client of a OpenVPN server. Uh, we are looking for have a Cisco VPN as well. This again we will discuss next week. Uh, the Jenkins server. Uh, we have the Blue Ocean UI. Uh, it's a more modern UI. Uh, everything that's defined with uh, Jenkins file, how the build is made using pipelines. This is another modern, I would say, uh, solution from, from Jenkins. And it's already uh, hooked to the GitHub. You know, once we create the environment for you, everything is already set up. You don't need to spend time, okay, ah, I need to integrate Jenkins, uh, because once I push a commit, I would like to Jenkins to build. So everything is already in place. Uh, uh, is it possible to use uh, our, our own uh, Git repository? Yes. The thing is, um, not the your own. Like once we create the Git repository, like you can. This is something that we need to discuss. But uh, if you if you are using Git, also because it will be easier to to integrate. But since we have uh, a structure, our workspace EE structure that uh, we expect that structure. Uh, your project needs to meet this this structure. You know what I mean? So yes, you can do it, but you can you need to move to this structure. Okay. So Jenkins. All right. So basically, this is the the stack. This is the service that is available. We have also the backup engine, but this is something. The only configuration that you can do it is the frequency. Uh, that will uh, run like every hour, every day, every week, and so on. So right now, I believe we are good with the the deployment. Uh, yes, for me it's good. So if you guys go back to the console, you're gonna see the dev. Uh, you can go to the dev environment uh, to the load balancer. And I will open here. Okay, this will take a little bit of time because it's the first time that Life Ray is, is starting up, so it's compiling JSPs and everything. Uh, I will open the production. Okay, I'm here in production. Let me close this one. So I have production here and I have dev here. Okay? So, if you guys look, I have different environments with different content in different code. This is important. Okay, what is different code? Let me open production and let me open dev. So, production, if we look here, the widgets on the sample. I only have hello world and iframe. This only two. Okay. If I go to the dev environment and I open widget, <coughs> I will have DS portlet, hello world, and iframe. So here you guys have an example sample of. Production has more content, but less code. Dev has more code, but less content, right? So this is something that happens uh, very often in, uh, in, in life rate development. And our goal here is show you guys how it's easy to merge them and have this, like, the latest code, the latest uh, data all together. And how hard this is to, to do that? It's very simple. 
Uh, I just need to go to our production environment. And on production environment, I need to go to the backups. Okay, here I have my backups. Probably you guys have one backup available there. And uh, I just need to ask to restore it. And where I would like to restore it. Right. I would like to restore it on the dev environment. Why? Because dev environment has the latest code. Okay. So just clicking and the thing like the the process will start up. And if we go to services here, okay, go logs, okay, services first. Okay, so on services you can see right now that this is already turned it off. It's not running, it's not healthy anymore because library or because the platform is uh, restoring everything or restoring the backup, you know. So there is some exceptions happening because we turn on turn off the the library. Those errors are like normal. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> okay, no. The thing is there is um, a fix that uh, we didn't push to production yet that uh, it will uh, it will shut down in the sequence that it does not create these exceptions you know but since it's a dev environment it's not a big deal but uh, we will take care of that right so guys this will take around 10 to 15 minutes uh, right now I'm open for more questions and uh, you can see, like, if you want to go out and look later how it works, I will keep this environment up and running until uh, 2 p.m. So you can play around. And later on, I will, uh, I will destroy Questions? Okay. If, uh, if, it's, if I understand it correctly, so you, it, the GitHub is like integral part of, of the solution, right? Yes. Uh, so do you plan somehow to um, also make it optional to use like different storage of the, of the customer's code? What kind of storage? Like, you, for example, that they can use their own GitHub. The, the, uh, the GitHub Enterprise? The bucket, for example. Yes, we have plans. Okay. We have plans, and but right now it's just GitHub. And uh, what is, I think, important for many customers is where, they, where their data are stored. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, if you can guarantee them that uh, their uh, database will be on uh, Stuttgart, uh, uh, not Stuttgart, Frankfurt, um, uh, like European zone, okay. or Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that we uh, we are really working. Uh, right now, GXP Cloud is available only in Americas. Ah, right? okay. But uh, our goal is for Key 2 next year be available on Europe, right? Uh, we're gonna have, I believe, one uh, one data center, probably will be UK or Ireland, mm -hmm. but uh, it depends on the uh, on the opportunities. For instance, I don't know. We have uh, ten customers looking for a data center on uh, on Germany. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, it's more on demand that we're gonna create new data centers. You know. So if you are interested, are you interested? Yeah, sure. Because we, if we would, uh, if we should like offer this to clients, mm -hmm. uh, this is this would be one of the first questions regarding cloud always. Yeah. Uh, where the data are stored, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we should be able to tell them: Is it possible? To, uh, because otherwise, uh, there is the discussion is over <laughs> yeah. in the time. If we tell them that the data are in in US or maybe in the Ireland data center, which from their perspective is like far from them, right? Got it. Okay. Good job. Okay. I have some questions. Uh, sure. Can I use a guy browser to to explore the database tables? Can uh, you use what? MySQL Explorer. Yes. Is possible? Yes. Okay. Um, is possible to use Kibana with uh, Elasticsearch? Um, not right now, but it's on our roadmap. We will be discussed next week. Next week. Like uh, our goal is provide yes, a ELK stack 
for manage the logs of the infrastructure, for your infrastructure, right? So you can search, you can aggregate, and everything. Um, uh, we can, uh, um, could I use uh, Elasticsearch with other applications? External um, application? No, no. Right now, this stack is uh, it's the only stack, it's the only services that is allowed to be deployed. You know? So uh, you cannot deploy, I don't know, uh, activity directory server within the, the, the the, the stack. It's something that we we decide in the beginning of the product to lock down things, but uh, as soon as we get more experience with the uh, how the the services uh, works together, we open for different type of services. You know. Okay. Okay. There is gentleman. Are you using proprietary? Data centers or is there Amazon under the hood? Somewhere? Amazon. Mm -hmm. Everything is Amazon. Yeah, right. yeah. everything is Amazon. And the following up question is Are you guys planning to have Google Cloud or Azure? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, yes, long term, no, short term. You know, um, our uh, our infrastructure is built using Terraform, <coughs> so I would say it's easy to move to Google Cloud or Azure, but uh, if you go in that direction, we are a small team yet, but we don't have like the hands or the experience on Azure or on Google Cloud to provide support or uh, a level of support that we are, uh, we are giving on Amazon. How big is your team right now? We are 20, 25 people. This is a small team, right? We're fire like we're smaller. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to know where you parameter the virtual host. The what? The virtual host. Ah, the virtual host? Uh, yeah. It is on the proxy or? Yeah, it's on service. Uh, Balancer. Custom domains. So you can create several custom domains and just add it there. Okay. okay. DHT Cloud does not have only one functionality of CI, I think. I'm sorry? DHT Cloud does not have one functionality of CI. Of CA? CI. CI. Jenkins. Okay, Jenkins, yeah. So do we have some plan to move that in the next year? No, it has. The Jenkins? Uh, we, we have to check with Jenkins, but can we do this from this uh, DXP Cloud frontend? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question, but... Uh, it's asking if you plan to integrate Jenkins interface into the DXP yeah, 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 yeah. Cloud. Ah, okay. No, we don't have the... The plans for that, you know. This was a long discussion in the team, like I would say maybe three hours. We were discussing that, and uh, we decided that uh, we we don't want to reinvent the wheel or like create a new interface for Jenkins. Jenkins has already two interfaces. If you look, like this is the classic one, and this is the uh, open open blue uh, blue ocean. Uh, interface, so yeah, it's a new plugin. So we decide to not integrate that, you know. And we believe that because why? Because we think that if everything is working well, probably you you're gonna never go to Jake and see if uh, what's going on, you know. So Jenkins will be very useful for you when something is not working. So if you have something that's breaking. Uh, I don't know, test, something like that, then it's the time to go to the Jenkins. But uh, with DXP Cloud, I believe it, it's not... Uh, uh, you, won't, uh, you go very often on DXP Cloud, but not on Jenkins. That's the reason, main reason. Okay, let me check how it works. The okay, it's still trying to restart. More questions? 
what type of uh, security monitoring do you have in uh, the Wii team? I'm asking because I was already doing some internal scanning of the network there and uh, suddenly my project was deleted. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if somebody noticed me doing some shenanigans and thought, oh, this workshop uh, guy could probably kill what he's doing. I was wondering if there's uh, an active team of monitoring stuff. Good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, a fair response, I don't know. Uh, but we have the uh, we have the certification as SOC2, mm -hmm. you know. Johnny, are you here? No, Johnny already left. But he is the guy that uh, helped us to get this certification. He will be the best person to uh, uh, reply to you. Yeah, All right. I'll uh, find him. All right. <laughs> More question, guys? Yep. Uh, the version of the letter is 7.1? Yes. Um, well, you are going to update the that to automatically, or uh, we are going to choose the letter version yes. we are going to use? For example, we have made some modules that work in version 1. Do you update the version? Yeah, for instance, for, for to update from 7.1 to 7.2, uh -huh. like the, <laughs> we will provide the init, but it's your responsibility to migrate your code to upgrade from one version to another version. Okay. Yeah, we are going to choose the later version, or, or no, for example, uh, you update, but when I'm going to deploy, I choose, I want to this model map in 7.1 level or in 7.2. So I'm going to choose this person, that option or...? No, because... No, no, no. If, like, if you are like, in a library project, you need to decide each, pro each library version you're going to use, right? Uh -huh. So right now it's 7.1. We don't have any customer or prospect looking for 7.0, uh, but we also support 7.0, and we're going to support 7.2, right? But they are, uh, it's not major versions, but uh, you need to go through the uh, upgrade process from 7.1 to 7.2, mm -hmm. right? And during this process, you are responsible to make these adjustments on your uh, team, on your OSGI modules, and so on. So it's up to you, like, okay, I am working with 7.1, but uh, let's move on to 7.2. Your project is on production and on 7.1, and your dev environment is on 7.2 already, you know, because you are moving uh, your, your code, right? Mm -hmm. So you can work with both versions, but in different environments. Mm -hmm. It's okay, there is. Awesome. But uh, yes, you can ship the code from 7 to 1 to 2, but what is data? The data phase upgrade for uh, maybe not for 7 2 or for the next version, 8 to 1. Do you know how do you handle it inside? I can't imagine how I can do here a data phase upgrade <coughs> for the next version, maybe. Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for instance, um, we have some internal projects. For instance, uh, lifefree.com. It's yeah. the, we have one team inside of Lifefree that is moving from, I believe, it's seven point zero to seven point one, mm -hmm. right? And they are already doing on top of TXP Cloud, right? We give them more permissions to deploy other type of services, and they are doing that. And with this experience that they built on top of the, the platform, we will provide you guys a process to migrate your projects to, to TXP Cloud, up to, from one version to another version of life. You know? But if you look, it's just a matter of uh, it's an upgrade, a regular upgrade, but it's being, it's being used on TXP Cloud, or it's being made on TXP Cloud. You know? But our goal, again, this will be discussed next week, uh, our goal is to provide you guys an easy to, uh, easy to use uh, process to upgrade. Just the data, not the code, right? Okay. 
So, okay, so we are back. So right now I am deploying again live free uh, with the, the backup and let's see, I believe in three minutes we'll be ready. Any other questions guys? Nobody asked about price. We're techies. We don't care about the price. We don't care about the technical details. Somebody else is going to say Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Wouldn't know why some of us just now, let alone. True, true. Yeah, one thing that. Um, okay, I want to regret the GXP call. And uh, I already have my on premise server. I already have something in production. How this must be done, you know. Uh, we need at least the a bit your backups, you know, document library backups and database backups and configuration files, you know. With that, uh, our team, we have a consulting team on the XP Cloud that will help you to make this process, you know. So it's not easy I would say like you are changing infrastructure, you are changing probably databases, uh, or changing as well the the version that you are using on Liferay, because probably nobody is using 7.1 here, right? So we have a team, a Liferay team, a DXP Cloud team that could help you guys to move on to the to the cloud. I can think of another question. Sure. Uh, if we go, uh, if we want to have uh, an online chat or something, should we use we deploy or is there a different Slack or a specific channel for uh, DXP Cloud? Uh, you should use the, we have a help center, mm -hmm. uh, lifefree, help.lifefree.com, and this will be the channel for customers to, to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Like will be our Lisa, you know. So, but it's uh, it's based on the uh, Zendesk. Zendesk, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are is the, the channel, the official channel to mm -hmm. to use uh, to ask questions or have problems. Um, okay, like I said before, we have this. Uh, we have to deploy this fix uh, of order of deploy and undeploy it. And this is another part of the fix. So, you guys need to, if you guys are on the same page that uh, I am, uh, you have the life rate up and running, it's healthy, and the load balancer was in an unhealthy, um, unhealthy state. But uh, you just need to restart, this will be fixed uh, in the next uh, weeks. And uh, Okay, I'm going to restart. Okay, it looks like we are back. So if I go to... Okay, this is production. If I go to the dev environment and refresh, I'm gonna need... I'm gonna get the same page as production on dev. And I will have also the DS portal available to be deployed. Okay, looks good. looks good. We have the same page with the same content. And right now, I will log in. Right now, I'm, a bit, uh, I'm able to add the DS port to the page. So, with that, we have the latest data that were in production. We have the latest code that were in GitHub. We merge all together, and we have in one environment everything. So. This, I'm pretty sure, will help you guys a lot 
to avoid mistakes, to avoid problems on production, because you're gonna integrate more frequently code and data in the in your environment. And how easy it was, like it's just a matter of time and click some buttons, you know. So, guys, with that, uh, I believe I complete the workshop. And if you have questions, just let me know. And thank you. Thank you. We have prospects. prospects. Yeah, we don't have customers yet. And what are your plans for the next month or years or months? Uh, actually, like uh, we have proposals in place. We are just waiting them to say, okay, I want to. Uh, so it could happen like today or next month or next year. That's generally next year. Because it's about pricing, is it? Uh, license model, uh, you have, or is it um, based on every yeah. customer where you go into this and see? Good question. Uh, it was a question about licensing. For instance, um, you need to license for a cluster, for a cluster in you know, a production environment. So you're gonna pay an annual fee for these two licenses, right? But uh, imagine that in, I don't know, in the end of the year, on Christmas or in the Black Friday, you have a lot of uh, access and you need more machines, right? So we have the auto scaling. I didn't show you guys this. Sorry. We open production. And here on the live free side, you can scale, you can enable auto scaling. So once the platform uh, see that you need more machines based on CPU, based on the, on the usage of memory, both metrics, uh, we're gonna start up a new library to, to your uh, environment. So you have two, we're gonna start a new one, three or four. You know? So right now you have four library running on production. So this two is already paid annually, and this two will be built based on the hours that they were running. You know. For those licenses, include all the hosting costs. So it's, it's yes. just custom license, and it's not yes. related to usage or anything mm -hmm. else. It's custom license. Yeah, license. exactly. And how much different that from a um, usual DXP license? You mean in the price yeah. or? Um, like our average uh, math that you can do it is uh, if you pay like uh, 100 uh, 100,000 euros for your uh, setup for your life rate licensing subscription uh, for GXP Cloud it will be 150,000 uh, uh, euros right so the price is about 50% uh, more of a license, of a life, life free subscription, okay? This is an average math, like don't go, like I don't have the right numbers, but, so look for our uh, sales team. But we are not selling here in Europe, I'm sorry, yet, you know, but uh, yeah, on, on Americas, uh, this is how it works. Right. Sure. I'm seeing here in the auto scaling thing, you can measure scale down, but can you also measure scale up? Say, for instance, you're going to do some kind of workshop or whatever, and you want to ensure that before that happens, you have five servers running, but there's no load yet. Got it. Uh, no, it's not possible yet, but I like your idea, and I will talk with the team next week.